by Michael Jordan's record-setting performances, the Chicago Bulls grabbed the first two games in their opening round playoff series with Cleveland. The home court proved to be a charm. Chicago held all the cards, while the stunned Cavaliers found themselves headed toward a speedy elimination. With their backs pressed firmly against the wall, the Cleveland Cavaliers returned home facing a stiff challenge. But the youthful Cavs proved worthy of the task. With impressive balance and poise, they won the next two games, forcing today's showdown in a series where there's truly been no place like home. Today in Chicago, the season is on the line for the Cavaliers. And the Bulls, the winner moves on, the loser goes home. It's game five. Chicago Stadium and the question is can Michael Jordan do it for the Chicago Bulls today in the deciding game hello again everyone I am Dick Stockton only two points separate these teams after four games you already saw the fact that Scottie Pippen the rookie from Central Arkansas is starting in place of Brad Sellers a big lineup change for the coach Doug Collins today 5 50 38 and 44 points in this series and look at what the rest of the top eight have done it's been a michael jordan show the question is what will jordan do today in your opinion well chicago has gotten off very slow to start ball games i think jordan is going to either come out look to establish something or read how his teammates are doing game so far as we approach the deciding contest so scotty pippen who has picked up after a slow start in the series gets the starting nod for Doug Collins, the Bulls are in white, the Cavaliers in blue are underway, and it's controlled by Cleveland. And here is Mark Price, who has been dynamite against the Bulls. Brad Doherty with the first shot of the game misses. <laughs> Sam Vincent, he'll handle the ball. He has slowed up a bit in the last couple of weeks, but he was one of the key reasons the Bulls came on toward the end of the year. He's lost his aggressiveness pushing the ball down the court. He misses his first shot and the rebound by Larry Nance, Doherty. Price Pippen is guarding Price right here. No one picked him up on a switch. Good rotation offensively, and Mike Sanders scores from the corner. Now there's a young man, Mike Sanders, that they had no idea that he'd be a starter for this ball club when they made that trade for Larry Nance, and here he is being productive. Porzine out of bounds. It's still Chicago ball. You're right about Mike Sanders. He was much more than a throw-in in that deal involving Nance. He's a 60-year man and has been kind of a surprise. He scored a big basket with 14 seconds left in the last game. Big factor to watch is the boards. In both games, the teams won. They dominated the boards. Pippen misses and Doherty the rebound. Doherty was held down after game one and then has been the top rebounder for the Cavaliers since. Nance. Baseline. 4 nothing. Well, this game is taking on the same frame of, as the first four games have, where the Cleveland Cavs have gotten out quickly. Jordan coming off the screen, hits his first shot of the game. Jordan needs 25 points to break Bernard's King record, the Bernard King's record, for most points in a five-game series. What pressure on a player knowing you have to come out and score 40 for your team to win? Mark Price with his basket, and it was Price who scored 31 in game three. Jordan gets it in good position to Pippen under the basket. Oakley lost it to Harper. Here's Ron Harper against Corzine. And it's an 8-2 Cavalier lead, and Collins calls a 20-second timeout. The quick starts by the Cavaliers. He talked about them. Thought his team should have won the first game. Does not seem to be afraid of the road. Jordan, who is one for one. The rest of the Bulls are 0 for 3 so far. Oakley setting a screen for Jordan. Harper. Jordan in the middle. No basket. 
basket. Offensive interference against the Bulls. So that basket won't count. Well, Charles Oakley touched that, and it appeared that it was going to go in even if he didn't touch it. The next time Chicago has the ball, I'd be interested to know what Cleveland's design is defensively against Jordan. No one really shuts him down, but they do have a plan. Nance shooting over Oakley, and it drops through, and the Cavaliers open up with an eight-point lead. Now, what their plan is, they want to keep Jordan out of the middle. Again, we see earlier in the year when Vincent joined this ball club, they were pushing the ball down the court. Now they're coming down slow, running the set offense. Thorzine pops from outside, air ball. Nance, Cleveland is the poised team in the early going, and you're right, the pressure seems to be showing on the Bulls. Doherty doesn't get the hoop, but he'll go to the line to shoot a pair. Dick, you're so right. It looks like a very nervous, rattled team out here when we look at this Chicago Bulls team to the point where Doug Collins didn't tell Scottie Pippen he was going to start him, okay, yesterday, because he was afraid he wouldn't be able to sleep. He let him know just before the start of this ball game. The other rookie, Horace Grant, comes into the ball game. He was a Doherty on the line. He had 13 rebounds in the second game of this series. Made the all-star team, and maybe a lot of people think he's the best passing center in the league. I don't think there's any doubt about that. The only one you can look at is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in that passing area. Who's older between the two, Doherty or Kareem? Do you realize Doherty is 22, Kareem is what, 41? <laughs> Meanwhile, a 10-point lead taking the crowd out of the game early here for the Cavaliers. This is the fifth in deciding game. Scottie Pippen misses, Oakley and Jordan crash, and Doherty. All five starters have scored for the Cavaliers. Ron Harper. Just a little too cute on that move to the basket. Make sure you get the two. And Sam Vincent penetrates. That's what Sam Vincent must do for Chicago to win. Be aggressive either for himself or to find a teammate open. And Oakley is called for the foul on Doherty. We talk about the balance of the Cleveland Cavaliers, and we will after this replay. Now, this is what we were talking about. Vincent taking it to the basket. Now, he had an option. He could have found Pippen, but he decided to shoot it himself. Mark Price buries one from the corner. Other than Mike Sanders, who scored eight points in game three, every one of Cleveland's starting five has been in double figures in this series. Oakley nearly lost the ball. Seven on the shot clock, Michael Jordan. Pippen crashing the offensive board, and the foul is called against the Cavaliers. Hugh Hollins and Earl Strom are the officials today. Tommy Nunez is the alternate, and that foul is on Larry Nance, who came over from Phoenix, and the Cavaliers struggled. They lost 14 of 25 when the trade was first made. 14 to 25, and the players and the media, everyone in the fans were questioning the deal. But then all of a sudden, they turned it around and were able to win nine out of their last 11 ball games. And the big thing that Larry Nance has brought to this team is the defensive weak side help coming over and blocking shots. Harper commits the foul. And Horace Grant scores. So Vincent Jordan and Grant each have two points. Cleveland leading here with just under eight minutes to go in the first period. Price goes between two defenders, and Sanders hits the jumper. Mike Sanders, who's the second-leading offensive rebounder on this team, has four. Well, you have to give the credit to Mark Price beating that trap and finding the open man. Scotty Pippen with a fake on Sanders. And a good move by Pippen, a very talented rookie. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's in the lineup for good next season. I, I can see picture Grant and Pippen being in the starting lineup for this club. Grant Doherty. Doherty has four. Nance and Sanders and Price all with four. Good balance for Cleveland. Oakley hits the open shot. Talking to Michael Jordan before the game, he said, of all the people on this club, I want to see Oakley get some chance to score early. When he does that, he's a more productive rebounder. 
Doherty with a short hook shot over Brad Oakley. Doherty. And that's really a mismatch, Dick, inside because we got someone 7 2 and we have some a player 6 8. Vincent misses outside and it's last touch by Jordan and Grant, so it'll be Cavaliers' ball and Doug Collins calls a timeout. An impressive start for the Cleveland Cavaliers. In a five game series to win. And the seventh team in history in all series. They're shooting 9 of 11 so far. Chicago is just barely over 40%. Now, one thing's happened in the other games. Cleveland's got off to the good start, but the, but the Bulls have come back. Harper hits from outside. He exploded for 30 points to match his regular season high in game four. Cavaliers have made their possessions count, haven't they? And that's, we're talking about the best defensive ball club statistically in the NBA, in the Bulls. Jordan in the middle, that's where the Cavs want him. Knocked away, great defense by Harper. And on the return from Doherty, Harper is fouled and will shoot two as Sam Vincent and Harper go diving into the stanchion. The one thing when you play Jordan, you notice how they're backing off defensively. They're saying to Jordan, beat us from the outside, but if you get to the middle, we're going to all be there to give some help, and they do converge, and Harper makes an excellent steal. Farzine comes back in the ball game, and Charles Oakley sits down. Oakley has not corralled a rebound as of yet. He was the second leading rebounder in the league this year, and here is Ron Harper. He missed the first game because of a sprained ankle, and Lenny Wilkins said he didn't have his timing for game two, but he's been a factor in the last two affairs. You know what's impressive about Harper in that last ball game when he scored 30 is he's matched up defensively against Michael Jordan. And you know, the night before and just before the game, all you're thinking about is how do I stop him? And in many cases, you forget about your own offensive game. He did not do that, and he hasn't done it so far today. He missed the free throws, but the Cavaliers keep the ball. Double team on Nance. Doherty. And Corzine the rebound. 22 to 10. Cleveland leading. 5.45 remaining in the first period. Dick Stockton and Bill Cunningham. Good play by Jordan. Great play to save it to Vincent. But the Cavaliers come out with it. And that was the presence of Larry Nance intimidating Vincent on the drive. Harper. Try to force it inside, gets another chance, and lays it in. You're right about Nance, because Doug Collins told us yesterday that the Cleveland Cavaliers used to be a soft team defensively in the middle. He said you can take it down the heart. No longer with Larry Nance in there. And another turnover. Three on two Cleveland. Harper lays it in, and the Cavaliers are dominating the Chicago Bulls in a most decisive passion. They have scored eight in a row and have opened up a 16-point bulge. And here's that steal by Sanders in the So far, four turnovers by Chicago have resulted in six Cleveland points. The Cavaliers have yet to turn it over with just under five minutes remaining in the first period. Jordan off the screen, pick and roll into Corzine, and Corzine scores. Jordan is on Harper, and Corzine doubles him immediately, and a foul against Chicago. Now what happens is Jordan curls around the good screen by set by Corzine, the double team, drops it off, and an easy jump hook shot for Corzine. Foul was only the second team foul. It was against Michael Jordan. Darty setting a screen. Price so quick. Harper in traffic. Open was Nance. Tremendous offensive rotation for the Cavaliers. Right, they swung it to one side of the court and had the ability and patience to come back to the other side in an easy two for Nance. Tremendous shooting edge by the Cavaliers, and they certainly have spread it out. Jordan over Harper hits. Jordan's second basket of the game. He's two for three, but a 14-point Cleveland lead. Harper leads them with eight. And a first turnover of the game by the Cavaliers. Four on three break. Sparrow throws it away. Rory Sparrow in for Sam Vincent, threw it away. Price goes for three. And Horace Grant into the hands of Jordan, who doesn't look pleased on his face. Gets stripped of the ball. Block inside by Pippen. Pippen had a shot blocked. And Harper scores. Sanders blocked it at one end. 
And the basket by Harper, who's in double figure. And not very often do you see a 7-2 center leading the fast break and making the pass. 30 to 14, the Cavaliers once again going off to the huge first period lead. Porzine, short. Bryce pushing it up past Sparrow, draws the foul. He is tremendously quick. A lot of people think, thought he wouldn't be as quick when he came out of Georgia Tech, how wrong they were. But not only that, is that Cleveland this past year drafted a lead guard in Kevin Johnson out of California. They had no confidence in Mark Price, but he came in into training camp this year and said, hey, this is my job, and allowed them the luxury of making that trade and getting Nance and Sanders. The Bulls in the penalty. Price with the free throw. They also had John Bagley, and they almost made a trade for Jim Paxson, which was nullified because of an injury. There's Craig Elo, who's 6'7", and a man of many roles. He can play forward or guard, and he's come in replacing Ron Harper. Well, the story so far is very simple. For Chicago at the offensive end, it's one pass, a shot, or a turnover. We're seeing Cleveland looking to push the ball, get the quick shot, or moving the ball. Sparrow's wild shot. Corzine follows from the corner and misses, and it's put up by Horace Grant, but the Bulls aren't even coming close on most of their initial shots. Not executing, not setting screens, no patience at the offensive end of the court. Two forty remaining in the first period. Price, good position for Brad Doherty. Didn't get the hoop. Rory Sparrow, the veteran, started for a while when he joined the team. Jordan had a screen from Corzine. And here's Nance. Price already with five assists, looking for more. Off the foot of Sparrow, out of bounds. Last touch by the Cavaliers, and the Bulls with 2.14 to go. And down 32 to 16, trying to get something going as John Hot Rod Williams, who's been the top offensive rebounder for the Cavaliers, has come in the ball game. Mike Sanders goes out of the ball game. Sparrow buries it. Under two minutes to go, first period. Now in game four, Chicago was down 18, 19 points in the second half and were able to come back and take the lead even. Price hits just from inside the three-point line. He has eight. Harper leads with ten, and the leading scorer, believe it or not, for the Bulls, Jordan and Grant, each with four. Who expected Michael Jordan to have just four points with a minute and a half to go in the first period? Grant doubled. Nance, good position for the rebound. Well, Larry Nance hasn't been scoring much, but he's been in there blocking shots and getting the defensive boards. Five rebounds for Larry Nance. Elo looking inside. Doherty works up and traveling called against Brad Doherty. At the other end of the court, a fan has run onto the court. And while security people apprehend him, we'll have a short delay. We will not show it. And we'll wait for play to resume. Six seconds. 105 showing. In this period, as Brad Doherty goes to the bench, he has scored six points. Now we're ready. Now Chicago's got to get themselves back into this game by making that extra pass offensively and becoming more aggressive defensively. Brad Sellers has come in the ball game. Horace Grant hits the jumper. So right now, Cleveland has Hot Rod Williams, Chris Dudley, the rookie from Yale at center, along with Nance and Elo. Mark Price remains in there. He's played all the way in this first period. Nance misses, Elo crashes the boards, and he's fouled inside. Chicago foul, and Elo will go to the line and shoot two. The Bulls right now have a front court of Corzine, Grant, and Brad Sellers, who lost his starting job to Pippen today, and in the backcourt, it's Michael Jordan and Rory Sparrow. Well, we see Doug Collins is scrambling, trying to find some kind of com combination out here to ignite this ball club, and so far, he has not been able to do it. Jordan committed the personal, his second, John Paxson, will come in and replace Jordan, who goes out with four points. 
Craig Elo. He started for Harper in game one and led the Cavaliers with 21 points. One out of two for Craig. Down by 15. Bulls. Two-man game, Corzine and Paxson double-teamed. Illegal defense called against the Cavaliers. Craig Elo was the guilty party. That's the first one. That's a warning. Second time on Wilkins' crew will result in a technical foul as Charles Oakley returns to the lineup. Well, Chicago, just one major stat is they haven't been to the free throw line to this point. It shows they're not taking the ball to the basket. They're not attacking, except for now, the technical foul because of the illegal defense. But they're not doing anything aggressive going to the basket. The rule, of course, to remind me and everyone else is that in the last 24 seconds, it's an automatic technical when you play the illegal defense. That's why he shot it, but that's a good point. They haven't gone to the line in the series. Oakley's eight trips are second to Jordan. That's not a lot. Forcing the perimeter shot and doing the job on the defensive glass. Sparrow with seven seconds to go, hits the shot. Rory Sparrow has four. Grant, the leading scorer with six. Five seconds, Nance. And that'll do it. But once again, the story is the same. In the fifth and deciding game of the first round, Doug Collins' Bulls have to climb back against the upstart Cleveland Cavaliers. Period. Cavaliers' biggest lead was 18, but the Bulls were on a 9-3 run to end the period. Let's see if it carries over into the second. Paxson and Sparrow at guard. Inside to Horace Grant, who has the shot blocked by John Williams, and a foul is called against the Cavaliers as he got Grant's hand. So Hot Rod Williams commits the foul, and Grant will shoot. He's up front along with Oakley and Brad Sellers. Cleveland with Elo at guard. Ron Harper has come back in. And up front, it's Chris Dudley, the rookie from Yale, John Williams, and Mike Sanders. Michael Jordan getting a breather. He scored 50 points in the first game, 55 in the second. Grant misses both free throws. That's not going to keep your momentum going that way. No, it sure isn't. Uh, nothing has gone right to this point. For Now they're coming out to, into a trap, the Bulls, trying to ignite themselves, get something going, maybe create a turnover and get out and run. The shot clock, the 24-second clock is off, and Ron Harper turned around to talk to Earl Strom, and so we'll have a stoppage of play. One of the clocks, the one that the Cavaliers were shooting at, went off. Well, wasn't that observant of Ron Harper, though, to be aware of the 24-second clock and know that, hey, it might be running down. And look, right up there, you know, they see there's 16 seconds on the 24-second clock. We see the trap, but the thing is that Harper has that presence to be aware of that 24-second clock, and he'll turn and let Earl Strom know about it. It seemed to go off with 13 seconds remaining. It is off right now. Time is out. All five Cavaliers starters have scored. About the Utah Lakers series. Well, I think it's going to be tough for Utah in their first game because of them playing and then having to travel to L.A. They really have the preparation for Frank Layden to have his team ready. A kick ball. And a new 24-second clock. The crowd had anticipated a turnover in Bulls' possession. Now the clock is working, and that's the time that the Cavaliers would have. Less than a minute gone by in the second period. Dick Stockton and Bill Cunningham. NBA playoffs heating up. Deciding game of the first round. John Williams going up and is fouled inside. What a tremendous front line the Cavaliers have. With Nance, Sanders, and Doherty, and they bring Williams in off the bench. Oh, it really is something that tr the draft that they had, our line, Mark Price, Ron Harper, that's some way to build a franchise in one year. And the trade with Phoenix. Michael Jordan back in the ball game, replacing Rory Sparrow. 12 point Cavalier lead. While the Bulls have fell behind in every game, they have come back. 
including the dramatic comeback before they lost in game four, as Bill pointed out. Sellers. That's what Sellers does best. He's a seven-footer, won't go inside, but he's got that soft touch. Well, the reason he was benched for 54 minutes, the last four 54 minutes, he has not gotten a defensive rebound. That's not good when you're seven feet tall. Chris Dudley, the rookie from Yale. Rebound by Charles Oakley. Here come the Bulls. Jordan, open man. Grant. Timeout, Cleveland. been that way Brad Doherty has returned into the lineup so up front it's Doherty Williams and Sanders Harper and Price the starting guards also back good pass into Williams from Sanders with 34 seconds left in the first quarter Chicago led by 15 or I should say Cleveland led by 15 and then Chicago went on a 13 to 3 run before that last basket Sellers Jordan trying to keep it alive he does to Oakley who gets the hoop and that's what the Bulls did the first two games in this series. Dominate the boards. They need Charles Oakley in there on the glass. Eight-point lead for Cleveland. Doherty working in against Oakley. Eight on the shot clock. Good pass from Sanders to Doherty. Oakley stays in bounds. Chance to cut it to six for the Bulls. The winner advances to the conference semifinals. Best of seven against the survivor of Washington and Detroit. Most of you will see that game coming up next as part of our NBA playoff doubleheader. Jordan. Oakley keeps it going, and Jordan inside against the Cavaliers, and Williams and Doherty stopped him. They bodied him all the way. And Doherty on the pass from Price fills the lane beautifully. Well, John Williams just stood there, did not commit the foul. And that's one thing Lenny Wilkins said. We cannot allow Michael Jordan to get those three-point plays. Either make sure he doesn't score the basket or don't foul him. Inside, Jordan draws the foul. Oakley has five rebounds so far, and here's how he's done it. Well, he didn't start out this ball game getting on the glass, but we see him anticipating the shot, having that good position, and then getting the two points. And there he is battling Doherty on the defensive glass and making the outlet pass. You're right. All of his rebounds have come here in the second period. No coincidence, certainly, that the Bulls have made their run. Jordan misses the first free throw. But it's hard to figure. Why wouldn't you come out in the fifth game and really establish something early where he is so strong and so good on the glass? Yesterday at practice in the suburbs of Chicago, after it was all over, Doug Collins took his team right under the hoop and talked about getting the position to get the rebounds and the ball. He said that would tell the story in this one. Rebound just about even, as you saw moments ago. The Cavaliers lead by nine. John Paxson is on Price. They're staying with Price all the way. You won't see him open at all unless he gets free to the corner. Doherty. Loose ball foul. Brad Doherty commits the foul. And Jordan is limping coming up court. I think his knee hit Brad Doherty's knee as he comes over and gives that help. And that's what happened. Brad Doherty should have just taken his time got that position and then exploded to the basket he's missed a few very easy opportunities inside second foul for Doherty Jordan with a fake goes to the hoop and draws another foul he'll shoot two he's going to see a lot of physical contact because that's one of the strategy that Lenny Wilkins will use defensively against Michael. But well, we see a different Bulls team this period. Now, all of a sudden, they're taking the ball to the basket. Now, they're on the offensive glass. First period, we didn't see them doing any of these things. John Williams with a second personal foul. Jordan going to the line has five points. Larry Nance replaces John Williams for the Cavaliers. They were 42-40 and 40 this year. 
31 and 51 the year before. And they're just getting better. Excellent balance on this ball club. That's the Cavaliers. Michael Jordan scoring output of the four games. I don't know if you'd say that would be the balance when you look at the Chicago Bulls, though. No. The question is, is it one great man against one good team? Well, if it's a tight game going into the fourth, that's what it will be. Sanders. Mike Sanders, Mike Sanders with six points. Leading score for Cleveland is Harper with 10. Doherty and Price each have eight. Grant's eight leads Chicago. He's trying to post up against Nance as Jordan draws the foul. No doubt about the Bulls' strategy. They want Jordan to penetrate and draw fouls as Vincent returns into the game replacing Paxson. Well, Sam Vincent, I don't think Doug Collins will wait very long this time when he's in the ball game. If he doesn't see Vincent doing what he wants, you know, after the Cavaliers score, he wants Vincent to look over to, over to him and say, and he'll get the nod, should he push the ball strong to the other end, looking for opportunities or run a set play? They haven't looked to run the ball, and that's when Vincent is an effective basketball player. Michael Jordan is three for five. He has as many misses today as he's had in all of this first round of the playoffs from the line. 41 to 33, the Cavaliers. Time remaining. Oakley getting a breather. He's been a horse in the second period. Harper. Nance. Lost it to Grant. Cleveland was careless that time. Bulls trying to take advantage to cut it to six. And a foul against the Cavaliers. They are already into the penalty. Chicago's committed just one team foul so far in the period. Now here's Jordan. Trying to penetrate, and we see Harper stepping up on him, and that's not a good play by Harper. If anything, Lenny Wilkins wants Jordan to beat him from the perimeter. Don't go out and challenge him out there in that part of the court. So Craig Elo comes in for Ron Harper, who goes out with his second personal foul. Harper, Darty, and John Williams each with two. Jordan looking for his tenth point of the ball game. And most of them coming from the line. We're seeing two young teams. Neither team is able to sustain anything for long periods of time. The Cavaliers start the ball game, doing the job on the defense, limiting the Bulls to one shot and getting out and running. They haven't run it all in this second period. Timeout called by Cleveland. At one time, the Cavaliers were up by 18. Sponsored by Schick. Earl Monroe made the art of razzle-dazzle look as natural as a walk down the street. From spin moves to sweeping baskets, Monroe's complete repertoire flowed with a unique blend of spontaneity and imagination. This style enjoyed universal crowd appeal to the opposition's amazement and made Earl the Pearl basketball's ultimate showman. Attacked by the Cavaliers, the Bulls are there to repel it. And a chance now to cut the lead to four. In the pattern in all the games of the series. Big leads him. Been dissolved in a hurry. And Jordan cuts it to four. Well, that's a great play coming out of the timeout by Doug Collins. Elo thought the screen was coming and Jordan just went back door. He's got 12. So an 18-point lead has been sliced to four. And Nance goes up, no basket. Now here's Nance taking the ball to the basket. Jordan coming from the rear and Corzine. They really converged on Nance and forced him to miss that shot. Grant second foul before the shot. Non-shooting. Only the second team foul on the Bulls. 6.25 remaining in the first half. Elo in a crowd as it stripped away. It was Jordan and Vincent. Vincent loses it, Pippen. It wasn't pretty, but the Bulls are within two. It's the defense of the Bulls. Great pen pressure and not allowing any penetration. This place is bananas. Hilo, foul, the basket counts. A gutty basket by one of the great hustling players on the Cavaliers, Craig Hilo. As Oakley returns to the ball game for the Chicago Bulls. What a way to silence this crowd. 
but just for a moment. Pippen's foul is his first. Third team foul on Chicago, and it's a five-point game. Michael Jordan has scored eight of the last ten points for the Bulls. Took a tough pass from Oakley. It was a low bounce pass, but Jordan was quick, good hands, and it's a three-point game. That was excellent communication between Oakley and Jordan, reading the back door, again, finding the open play. Doherty over Corzine. Jordan the rebound. The Bulls trail by three. Pippen. Corzine crashes the offensive board. Feeds Jordan. Mark Price penetrating. Off the glass, comes right back. Mark Price, but Michael Jordan has scored 12 points so far in the second period. 46 to 43, they double him, leaving Corzine open for the moment. Chicago's on fire. Defensively, they're doing their job. We saw the double team and how quickly they swung that basketball. Now, who's going to show the leadership for the Cavaliers with this crowd going crazy here in Chicago? Elo hit a three-point basket just a moment ago, comes back for two. He was with the Houston Rockets and played in an NBA Finals against the Boston Celtics. The Rockets were sorry they let him go, wanted him back. Cleveland picked it up to their benefit. It sure was. It, this is a time with young ball clubs, you really learn a lot about them. Who has the ability to step forward? Pippen! And he stepped on the line. No basket as Pippen on the great baseline drive was out of bounds. Now he beats Doherty down the baseline. Boy, that was a close call. I wasn't sure if he stepped out of bounds. It didn't look like he was. It might have been his next foot that we didn't see. It wasn't the foot we saw. Earl Strom was right on it. Doherty, second chance. And Brad Doherty now with 10 points. So Doherty, Harper, and Price all with 10 points in the game. And the Bulls call a timeout the game of basketball in a lot of ways if you put the ball in the basket uh, you, you're going to do it and uh, that may sound arcane and basic but that's the case but how about two coaches trying to figure out one how do I get my team off to a good start and the other one Lenny Wilkins how do I sustain it Jordan good pass into Pippen once again Cleveland's defense inside impressive to say the least Elo forced it out of bounds, Chicago's ball, 50 to 45 to score. Cleveland had an 18-point lead, and the Bulls cut it down to a point. Rory Sparrow back in, eight-year veteran, whose playing time has increased in each succeeding first-round game against the Cavs. Well, he has that experience of playoff of basketball when he was with the New York Knickerbockers. Jordan in and out. Doherty with another rebound. Six for Doherty. And a Chicago foul. That'll be their fourth team foul. Charles Oakley with his second. Chicago woeful 44% shooting. Has picked up the tempo thanks to Jordan in the second period. And Cleveland coming back down to earth a little bit. Cavaliers have already weathered one storm on the road here in game five. Yeah, they've showed a lot of poise over this last couple minutes, and there's a good pass. Doherty. 12 points for Brad Doherty. You know, when he came into the league, everyone said, oh, he's, he might be too soft to play in the league, but do you know he hunts rattlesnakes? How can anyone be soft that hunts rattlesnakes? Oh, no one. Pippen, baseline. Scotty Pippen, who impressed Lenny Wilkins, he said, I've got to play him with a guard because that's how quick he is up front. Winding down to two minutes to go in the first half. Elo, he has hit seven big points 
He has eight in the ball game, but seven came after the Chicago Bulls had made a great run. We have two players out here that were free agents that are start or on the court right now for this Cleveland team, and that's Craig Eagle and Mike Sanders. And you have to tip your hat to people that have that type of courage and keep going after it. Jordan will go to the line as Elo commits the foul. We're at Chicago Stadium where they're rocking here and a crowd upwards of 20,000 in the usual standing room up in the balcony. It's the fifth and deciding game of the NBA's Eastern Conference first round matchup between the Chicago Bulls and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Two teams who have a great future in this league who play exciting basketball. Question is, can Michael Jordan, the great one-man gang, survive against the Cleveland Cavaliers with their balance? And the winner will face the Washington Detroit winner coming up later for most of you on CBS this afternoon and that series is just like this one team both teams winning their games at, at, at home so we'll have to wait and see that'll be a battle there in Detroit 18 points for Jordan the lead is five and a foul Jordan picks up his third personal foul Mike Sanders going to the hoop three on Jordan Mike Sanders, in dramatic fashion, he went to UCLA and is in his sixth year, finally getting a chance to play in the big time playoffs. Well, the thing he adds to this ball club, he's a very good defensive ball player, and he can hit that open jump shot, and those are two things that Lenny Wilkins was able to see quickly, and he had to get him in good physical condition, and now he's playing the type of ball that allowed him to, to start now for this Cleveland ball club. Gorzine comes in for Jordan, who goes out with three personal fouls. He scored 18. We'll see what the Cavaliers do the rest of this period if Jordan stays out the rest of the half, leading by six. Pippen and Sparrow make up the backcourt with Grant Corzine and Oakley. So we see a bit of Chicago's versatility with Scottie Pippen playing guard. As his career goes on, I think Scottie Pippen will be able to play three spots. Lead guard, off guard, and the small forward position. He goes out for John Paxson. Pippen has scored six. Four on the shot clock. Sparrow goes in. Nance didn't block it, but he made him think about it a bit and with 110 to go price pulls up missed just hit the front end of the rim so since Jordan's gone out there been no scoring Paxson misses a three Nance to the hoop and the basket will not count Lenny Wilkins off the bench as Larry Nance picks up his third foul. Now let's take a look. That's a close call. Very close. Grant was kind of sliding with him. Yeah, and with that angle, I couldn't tell exactly if he had that position. You can be moving to draw the charge as long as you have that good position. Paxson misses. The Chicago Bulls have yet to hit a three-point basket. They are 0 for 9 so far in this series, so... You wonder why they're taking dead aim. Meanwhile, a loose ball foul called against Grant, his third. So Horace Grant and Michael Jordan each with three fouls for Chicago. Nance has three for the Cavaliers. Pippen back. Doherty on the line with 12 points and six rebounds. Acquired in a trade from the Philadelphia 76ers, and Roy Hinson was the man who went from Cleveland to Philadelphia. And on to New Jersey. So I guess you'd have to say that it worked out pretty well for Cleveland. To say the least. Well, to win in the NBA and to get to the finals, you need the man in the middle. And they feel right here, and I agree, that they have someone that has the chance to lead them to a, a world championship in Cleveland. That's a strong comment, but a lot of people around basketball would agree. Hey, Brad Dart, he's 22 years old, and it's his second year in the league, and he was an all-star. Corzine. Oakley, the offensive rebound. 20 seconds to go, and Chicago can play for the last shot. Now, Doug Collins going into halftime, I would feel that he has got to really jump on his team in that locker room, making sure that they don't come out and start the third period in the same fashion they started this ball game because it'll be all over for them. Paxson with three seconds to go. Misses, and Pippen stuffs it through. 
Scotty Pippen with one second to go cuts it to five. Cavaliers at one time had an 18-point lead. Chicago cut it down to one with Michael Jordan with a great second period, and that's the end of the first half with the score. The Cavaliers, 56, the Bulls, 51. And Pat O'Brien will be back from Control Room 43 with the Prudential at the half after this message. 56, Chicago 51. Michael Jordan had only four points in the first quarter, 14 in the second quarter, but he has three fouls. And there is the bouncing ball, and as you at the half veterans know, this means it is time to update you on the playoffs and remind you that as part of our doubleheader this afternoon, it's the Lakers opening up against Utah in the Western Conference semifinals, and most of you will see another game five, this one between the refuse-to-go-on-vacation bullets and the hoping-to-send-them-on-their-way pistons, that one from Detroit, where Tim Brandt and Billy Packer get to sit in the front row. Gentlemen? All right. Resume today. Here you're going to see Daryl Walker coming from behind in the open court, pushing Rodman, uh, and that started things early on in the series. Then in game two, things heated up even more. Watch Mahorn grab a rebound here. Then Daryl Walker is on the floor, has the ball thrown at him. One of the great catches in the history of sport this year, but you don't like to catch him flat on your back, Tim. Can we expect that again today? That type of physical player. Now do they say, hey, this is game five. We're... I, are you scouting the Lakers' sixth man over there? I certainly am, and it's a tough, Tommy. I can't get my team's concentration. You know, what happens when, when you get in the huddle? Did, it, did the, the ball players lose their concentration on no. what you're saying? No, I do. <laughs> Pat, there will be a game here this afternoon. <laughs> All right, Tommy, your mother's going to be ashamed of you. On this occasion, speaking of mothers, we visited some moms who you might want to thank for raising some of our favorite All-Stars. That and more as at us all thrills is Michael Jordan, and if you're looking for his mom, you can find her at the family store. He sh Frank right up there with the uh, uh, NFC Championship game of two years ago. So there they were, the last two Super Bowl champions doing battle last night for a charitable cause. As usual, the Redskins relied on their outside speed. The Giants relied on their linebackers, Carl Banks, Andy Hedden, and Pepper Johnson up front. They got a lot of muscle out there. It's got to be the biggest linebackers I've ever seen. I've never seen them in regular clothes before. It was kind of uh, frightening. <laughs> Getting to know you, getting to know all about you. It was a nice chance for a few old pals to get uh, reacquainted. I'm just glad we came out of it alive. <laughs> the Redskins went to the long ball and burned the Giants with a dozen three-pointers to win by 10. Pepper Johnson led the visitors with 28 points and nine personal fouls. They weren't used to a guy about 6'3", 250 pounds gliding through there. How so. much? <laughs> and now we know why they play football. <laughs> well, time for Dick and Billy to go back to work. I'm... second quarter and no wonder the Bulls came alive in the second they were down by 18 cut it to one trail by five Rory Sparrow starts in the backcourt for Chicago as the second half gets underway and a loose ball foul against Charles Oakley with 15 seconds elapsed and that'll be his third personal foul so Chicago starting Sparrow and Jordan and Ron Harper shaken up that's the sprained ankle that kept him out of the first game he missed 24 games this year with a foot injury now let's see if we can see where he hurts this ankle he's trying to get that position on the boards hard to tell where if someone stepped on him or not in any event Craig Elo comes in for him so that's a blow for the Cavaliers to lose Ron Harper early on hopefully he'll be back Elo's done very well though take nothing away from him Mike Sanders this is the drive. The Cleveland's Darty still has it. Sanders from the corner hits. Mike Sanders is perfect today. Four for four from the field. And the lead is seven. Well, that does it. that takes a lot of pressure off Michael Jordan defensively now that Harper is out of the game and Elo is in. 
inside Corzine from Oakley. Does that make my question to you at halftime moot? A moot point? It's a moot point. <laughs> <laughs> Harper is going to the locker room to get retaped. We'll watch his return if he does come back. And in game five, you'd have to think if he can walk, he'll play. Yes. Elo overthrows Doherty, but a pushing foul on Corzine. Corzine with his second foul. 58 to 53. This is the fifth and deciding game of the first round. The winner will move on into the conference semifinals against the winner of Detroit, Washington, coming up next for most of you. The loser, that'll do it for this season. So everything rides here. And they said that Sparrow was out of bounds. No basket. Earl Strom didn't see the call by Hugh Hollins that Sparrow had gone out of bounds, but great hustle anyway. Well, what happens is Hugh Evans is down there on the baseline, and he has the ability to see that. That's just excellent communication with the officials just on top of the play. Hugh Evans, excuse me. Price. Drops for Mark Price. He has 12 points. Doherty leads with 13. Oakley missing from outside. Oakley is on Nance. Elo spots up for a three. And a loose ball foul called against the Cavaliers. It may be on Nance, and if it is, that'll be four. And it is four on Larry Nance. Now, we've seen an adjustment by Lenny Wilkins coming out in the second half. In the first half, they didn't double Michael Jordan when he touched the ball out in the wing. That last time, Price went over and doubled him immediately. Sparrow coming around a screen. Any points they get from that other guard, other than Michael Jordan, will be gravy for the Bulls in the second half. Well, it, it just what it do, does is it builds confidence in Sparrow, and then when they do double-team Jordan, he'll find Sparrow, and he has the confidence to hit that open shot. Eight, seven on the shot clock. Trying to draw the foul and succeeding is Mark Price. A very smart player is Mark Price. Well, right here, I think he gets elbow around Sparrow. Six assists for Mark Price. Makes the first free throw, but the replay shows you're right. Looked like no foul. 62 to 55. Cleveland leading. A little more than two and a half minutes gone by here in this third period. Dick Stockton and Bill Cunningham. Michael Jordan against the Cavaliers. That's basically what it's been coming into this one. Excellent defense that time against Jordan, trying to get to the middle. And Pippen draws the foul in the paint. Mike Sanders. Now here's Jordan trying to get to the middle, and we see the good defense. Elo holding his position. Jordan just looking to swing the basketball. And there's Pippen able to duck in and now draw the foul. Scotty Pippen was the fifth pick in the draft. Chicago really helped themselves with Grant number 10 and Pippen number five. You have to take your hat off to Doug Collins. He knew this player, Scotty Pippen, and why he didn't tell him he was going to start this ball game. You know, he waited till today, and uh, he's responded very well to the starting role here in this fifth game. He has 10 points, and the Cleveland lead cut to five. Nance with four fouls, and the group of three for Chicago. Price coming off the screen. Mark Price, who has 16 points. He is the second leading scorer in the game to Jordan's 18 and has hit six of eight. Well, they'll look for more offense from him, from Mark Price, with, with uh, Harper on the bench with that sprained ankle. Losing it out of bounds. Pippen. Ron Harper still has not returned. Went to the dressing room to have his ankle taped. Elo, no foul called. He was I can't believe no foul. Oak. Sparrow feeding Jordan. Jordan's foul, but Elo was undercut. Had his legs taken out from under by Charles Oakley. Oh, you tell me. This, this is a bad call right here. No call. There's the ball. Elo has it, and he just gets clipped. 
by Charles Oakley and it ends up with Jordan now going to the foul line with two foul shots. That's either a foul or 15 yards. <laughs> Probably both. A break for the Bulls. Jordan hits the free throw looking for his 20th point of the game. Elo flexing his knee. And that would be a real problem for Lenny Wilkins if Craig Elo was hurt and wasn't able to continue. Missed the second rebound Sanders. Six point Cleveland lead. They stormed out in front had an 18 point bulge early. Chicago cut it down. Sanders hits and the Cavaliers have done a terrific job in keeping the Bulls at bay since their big spurt early in the second. Yeah and hitting these jump shots Mark Price and Craig Elo will open up the inside for the two big men John Williams and Brad Doherty. Oakley can't control it out of bounds. So the Bulls have turned it over two of the last three times they've had it and the Cavaliers with a chance to raise it to ten. Yeah it, again we see to start this third period this Bulls team coming out flat not aggressive defensively without Ron Harper. That's right. Three point shot is off by Price. Sparrow comes out with it. 740 remaining third period. The winner continues to play in the NBA playoffs. The loser packs it in. One game for everything here. Oakley, great feed to Michael Jordan. Great pass by Oakley. Nice touch pass. Easy to handle. 21 for Michael Jordan, who had only four points in the first period. His team was down by 12. Double quickly on Darty, and Pippen gets it away from him. He's got Sparrow and Oakley. Oakley. Timeout, Cleveland. Bulls are on another rampage. Think Michael Jordan just catches the ball and scores but right here you see how hard he has to work to get that basketball Mike Sanders just working his tail off at the defensive end of the court and that good work and hard work by Jordan pays off with a great pass from Oakley now here's the penetration Oakley finding the open man right there and that's Jordan on that same play Ron Harper has come back in the lineup for the Cleveland Cavaliers he was shaken up his ankle was taped in the dressing room and here he is back in there with 6.48 remaining in the third period, Jordan's guarding him. Sparrow all over Price. Chicago's tightened the defense. It's obvious. Harper, though, misses an open jumper, and Jordan doubled. Good defense by Harper to help Price. Stopped him getting to the basket. Sparrow in the corner. Oakley gets the ball. Pippen, no basket. And a foul called against the Cavaliers. Fourth team foul, and it's Sanders with number two on Mike. You know, if Charles Oakley would just be satisfied with just rebounding on the both ends of the court, making a few passes, and maybe averaging 12, 14 points, he'd be a much better player than just always thinking too much at the offensive end of the court. In the first two games, he was in double figures in scoring and rebounds. Oakley knocks it away and last touch by Darty. Now that was excellent defense by the Cavaliers. When Jordan catches the ball they back off force him to shoot the jump shot. That time they just he tried to get to the baseline but they all collapsed. Barely halfway through this third period Pippen good fake on Sanders hits the baseline shot. 12 for Scotty Pippen. Only two bulls are in double figures. Jordan 21 and then Pippen with 12. And Pippen is looking for his own shot. Something during the course of the year he lost confidence and didn't do that. And in a game like this, he's performing. Sanders. Good defense by Pippen on Sanders inside. Chicago can come tie it up. And they do with Jordan. The first tie of the ball game. Chicago has never led. It's been an 18 point comeback for Chabuls. John Williams with the first third basket for Cleveland in the last five minutes. 
They had gone a long way with great defense by Chicago sparking their offense. Well, that time they just rotated the ball with the double team on Doherty and found the open man. So Cavaliers break the tie with 5.04 to go and Pippen rebound Doherty. Harper in an open court with fake Sanders. Hot Rod Williams, the best offensive rebounder, comes in and scores. And the Cavaliers have scored four straight points and a 20-second timeout called by Doug Collins of the Bulls. So Chicago ties it on Jordan's shot, and then Cavaliers take over. Now, we talk about adjustments for teams. Now, we'll see the ball will go into Brad Doherty. And as Chuck Daly said, this bullet team never played this hard until they got to the playoffs, and they have those veterans, and they know what a fifth game is all about. Michael Jordan went right around Ron Harper, who got no help whatsoever inside. That's what Lenny Wilkins wanted help. It wasn't there. Right. Cannot allow him to get to the basket. Only good things happen for the Bulls when he does that. 25 for Jordan. 21 since the first period. Sanders. Rebound Oakley. Nine rebounds for Charles Oakley, and Jordan overthrows Pippen, who winds up four rows into the press sector. <laughs> Larry Nance with four fouls in the ballgame. He has scored six points, but he is so important with the inner defense for the Cavaliers. He is, and he, that shot blocking, as you mentioned, they have their two best on the court right now. He gets the offensive rebound when Price missed, and Williams has the shot blocked. Jordan got that one. And Pippen can't hold on. So two fast-break opportunities by the Bulls goes by the boards. So they can't take advantage of that good defense at one end. And two bad passes by Michael Jordan. Timeout, 345 remaining in the third. We will, we will rock you. On the other hand, he is done. You just have to tip your hat to Jerry Krause. He has found some talent, and the complexions of these franchises who were languishing have dramatically increased. Harper inside against Jordan scores. So Ron Harper getting his first basket since the first period has 12 and it's 72 to 68. You've got to admire the Cavaliers, their poise. 18 point lead cut to one. Chicago tied it up and then Cleveland scored four in a row to keep their lead and get the ball back on a turnover. That's the third turnover for Jordan in a row. Williams hits the jumper, so they're taking advantage of the turnovers, and it's a six-point Cavalier lead. Three minutes to go in the third period. Well, Williams has really come off the bench in this third period and been a spark. He only had two points in the first half, but he's picked up a quick six here. Corzine is posting up against Doherty. Pippen. And Jordan. Long-range shot price. He anticipated... So Jordan, in a mild slump for him, you might say. Doherty, good defense by Corzine up front. See what the Bulls do with 2.25 to go as they walk it up. Cavaliers have outscored them 8-2 to two since the game was tied at 66. Jordan is wide open. And Michael Jordan has broken the NBA record for most points in a five-game series. He has 27 breaking Bernard King's mark set against the Detroit Pistons while in the uniform of the New York Knicks a couple of seasons ago. Well, he's going to have to really break that for the Bulls here today. Under two minutes to go in the third. Five seconds to go on the clock. Nance, who's playing with four fouls. Six-point Cleveland lead again. You consider how young the Cavaliers, the Cavaliers are. Their poise is astounding. Well, there's four players on the court with a total of eight years of NBA experience. Not so for Corzine. He's been around a while. <laughs> yep, that's right. He's Well, he's the old man of this Bulls team. He's 32 years old. The old man and the young man in the pivot. Steel Pippen. Two on one with Sparrow. Pippen. A two-point game. Boy, it doesn't take long for the complexion to change in this one. 
14 for Scottie Pippen, second to Jordan's 25. Doherty blocked by Jordan out of bounds. Cleveland ball. Now here's the Mark Price making that pass. Pippen stepping in the passing lane. He does the first smart thing. He gets it to the lead guard, Sparrow, who delivers the easy two. John Paxson has come into the ball game replacing Sparrow. Scotty Pippen's going to be a star in this league. He will be. Harper, Nance to the hoop, and a Chicago foul. Their fourth team foul, but it may be shooting. Scotty Pippen, talented player, good defense, started the year, and then seemed to lose a little bit of confidence. But he makes aggressive mistakes, and no coach minds that. No, both Grant and Pippen do the same thing out there. And Doug Collins says, hey, I can live with those things. When a guy's out there really working hard, we can correct those mistakes when someone gives the effort. Pippen's foul was his third. Look at Doug, boy. Collins has got the tie down. Uh, see, he's looking at his notes right there, trying to figure what play he'd like to run with the combination of players in the ballgame. He's trying to look like Roly Massimino is what he's trying to do. He's got to put a few pounds on that. Under a minute to go in the third. Three-point lead Cleveland. Cavs led by 12 at the quarter. Five at the half. Oakley gets his own rebound and draws the foul. Well, Oakley got away with a little push there. He, as soon as he let that ball go, he knew he had missed it, and he just nudged Dudley and was able to get that good position inside. Chris Dudley giving Doherty a breather. Dudley beat all odds. A fourth-round draft pick to make the team. He has more offensive rebounds than defensive rebounds. And it's been a welcome surprise. Doherty on the bench right now with 13 points and seven rebounds. When the trade was made and Mark West went to Phoenix. Dudley, who was playing the forward position, now is forced into the backup center position, and it's taken him a little while to adjust to that center position. Sanders in for Dudley. Took a lot of guts for the Cavaliers to maybe give up a playoff year by making that trade. It hurt the chemistry and a steal by Pippen. The Bulls lead for the first time in the game. They're coming back with that trap. They're going to a 1-3-1 one -one trap, and it rattled this cab team that last time. Listen to them here at the stadium. Now, you got to remember, Michael Jordan is on the bench right now, and this team out here is trying to prove something that, hey, we're not a one-man show. We can play this game, too. 11 seconds to go and another turnover. Vincent. And Pippen scores with five seconds to go. The Bulls are up by three. They are on a 10-to-1 run. And they don't know the clock was running out. What a spurt by Chicago. Here's that trap in Scottie Pippen. The one thing he has is that great anticipation. And what a move to the basket. And here's another steal. Sam Vincent pushing it down the court. And watch who comes in and taps it in. With no question, it's Scottie Pippen. That's the end of the third period. The Bulls lead. The place is going wild. And we'll return after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports welcomes you again to the exciting 1988 NBA playoffs. After three periods of play, in which the winner will move on and the loser goes home, the deciding game of this first round, the Chicago Bulls outscore the Cavaliers 10-1 to to take their first lead, and they did it with Michael Jordan on the bench. They have rallied from 18, 
Mike Sanders goes in and scores, and it's a one-point game. We have talked about Cleveland's tremendous poise to withstand many rushes by the Bulls today, Billy. It'll be a test here in this fourth period to see how they respond now. It sure has, and they came out and responded well that first time they saw the trap. But Lenny Wilkins is, if you, when we asked him yesterday, what is the key for your ball, ball club? He said turnovers, and we saw how it hurt them there. Paxson hits a two-point shot. Two points for Paxson. He starts out at guard along with Jordan and Vincent. There are three guards. In fact, Jordan playing a forward position up front with Grant and Corzine. Michael Jordan playing forward here. He's guarding Sanders. Nance. Corzine clears. Cavaliers have Elo and Harper and Sanders. Doherty back in there and Nance up front. Home teams have won every game so far in this series. Paxson is open. And Doherty clears. Scotty Pippen scored 10 points in that third period for Chicago. And Oakley grabbed a bunch of rebounds. Yeah, the two keys for Chicago were Pippen and Oakley in that third period. Nearly a bad pass, and they lose it. Doherty careless. And Chicago takes over. In the first half, Cle Cleveland did an excellent job handling the basketball. They only had seven turnovers in this third and fourth period. They've been just turning it over on a regular basis and passes that are careless. That's what hurts. Seven in the second half. A lot of that is due to the Bulls pressure defense. They have turned it up a notch. Corzine, long range. And what we're seeing is a Bulls team where everybody is in the flow now. Everyone is contributing. Michael Jordan doesn't have to carry this carry the show right now. Doherty foul going up. In fact, Jordan has six assists, which indicates the fact that he is feeding other players to get the points. Timeout. 9.57 remaining in a thriller. Chicago leading. Pippen out in the open court. It's been Corzine doing something we haven't seen him do very much this year. Down in the low post scoring. Doherty on the line. Chicago going with in effect three guards, although Michael Jordan playing the forward position. Doherty with 15 points. Price leads with 16. And there are four players in double figures for Cleveland. Four eighty-one Chicago. Open in the corner is Sam Vincent. Price. Loose ball Sanders. Cavaliers have exhibited poise all day, but when you get into a close game in the fourth period with Jordan on the other club, poise may not do it for you. Well, we're, they're going to need that poise, though, but I think it's going to be the defense. Who is going to play the better defense? Price with a two-point basket. Now we see this young ball club just bouncing right back. We've seen him. This is just like a, a real fight out here. You know, one round goes to one guy and the other guy comes back and he wins the next one. Foul away from the ball. Mike Sanders with three fouls. Now here's Jordan trying to post up. Mike Sanders trying to get a round on him, but Jordan has that good position, makes himself nice and big and wide and picks up the foul. Vincent goes out of the game to cheers. Well, Doug Collins did not wait. He missed that open jump shot, and he's going back to, you know, his veteran team. Pippen gets his own rebound. Tough inside is Scotty. He's fouled and will shoot. Doug Collins will have Pippen, Grant, Jordan, and who else? Sparrow getting set to check in, and he does for John Paxson. In the lineup for Chicago, number two, Ray Sparrow. Scotty Pippen also has four rebounds today. Got the starting nod at the last minute. Was told the last minute in place of Brad Sellers. And the lead is three. Winner of this game will face the survivor of Detroit and Washington, which comes up next for most of you on CBS in their fifth and deciding game of the first round of this Eastern Conference showdown. Nance doubled. 
Jordan stays with Harper. Loose ball. Harper didn't move. Pippen took the loose ball. Pippen keeps his balance. Great move by Scotty. It's his tightrope walking act. I want to see it again. Off the screen is Jordan. 29 for Jordan. Timeout, Cleveland. Here's Pippen tiptoeing down the sideline, able to maintain that control, and it ends up to be two points on a jump shot by Michael Jordan. 5th game and that's what we have here Chicago leading by five Jordan's first points in the last six minutes and the Bulls still outscored Cleveland by 12 Sanders with 13 points missing Jordan inside draws the foul Dick Stockton and Bill Cunningham here at Chicago Stadium. This place is rocking. As we promised you we'd have in the playoffs, the Chicago Bulls at one time down by 18 points, cut it to one. Cleveland maintained the lead. They withstood several forays by Chicago, but the Bulls with a late third period threat have opened up an 89-83 lead as John Williams comes back in the ball game. You know, Michael Jordan on his TV show last night, I think offered a challenge, as you mentioned, the crowd here, saying that in Richfield he thought that was the loudest crowd he had ever heard, and I think that the people here at the stadium took that as a, an insult and a challenge to prove him wrong. The home teams have won all but one game in the Eastern Conference playoffs. That's when the Celtics beat the Knicks Friday night in New York. But a neat drive by Mark Price cuts Chicago's lead to five, and Price with 20 leads the Cavaliers. But we know this is Michael Jordan time, and the pressure really is on Ron, Ron Harper to try and keep him under control, trying to force some bad shots from Jordan. Jordan gets it inside and loses it out of bounds. How are the Cavaliers playing him? I know he's got 30 and no one stops him. How would you grade Cleveland's defense of him today? Excellent. I don't know if you can do a better job. They've kept their feet, had good defensive position, not allowing him to duck under as we saw in that last play. And I think Michael's a little frustrated right now. Doherty is fouled and here is Michael on the other end. Now here he is. You see the good position by Harper. And there's Vance coming over to give a little help. You know, you need a little bit of help from your friends when you're playing against someone like Jordan. Four fouls on Scottie Pippen. And Doherty with 15 points. Nine rebounds as well for Brad. He had 12 at halftime. So he has quieted down in the third period thanks to Chicago's inside defense. He misses both. He's five for eight from the line. And the lead is still five for Chicago. Bulls trying to advance for the first time since 1981 when they beat the New York Knicks and then lost to Boston. Corzine. And now the pressure is on the Cleveland Cavaliers. They've got to make a move now, Billy. They're down by seven points. There's a lot of time left, but they can't let this game get away. I would think at this point. They have to show that poise and have patience offensively. Oh, what a shot by Ron Harper. And he's fouled. So an acrobatic play by Ron Harper. Now, this, explain this move to me. I, I don't know what you say about that. I, 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 it's amazing he even knew where the basket was on this move to the basket. Corzine picks up his fourth foul, and you can't blame him the way the whirling dervish was going and Ron Harper looking for his 15th point of the game. He's got it. And it's a four point game Chicago leading with six and a half to go. Out struck a big chord for the Cavaliers. Jordan. In the middle hits. 33 for Michael Jordan. 
And that's where Harper has got to fight through screens. He's going to need a lot of help because every time down the court, this from here on in, they're going to be going to Jordan. And we see the defense against Brad Doherty, the double team. And Harper inside gets the basket. I noticed that they had Pippen guarding Ron Harper that time down, and the lead is four. A little more than halfway through this fourth period. And here comes Jordan. He's going to be coming off the baseline screens now. John Williams with the rebound. Oakley complaining to Earl Strom. Price tries to draw the foul. Nothing doing. Out of control. Pippen has it blocked by Nance, but still has it. 94 to 90, Chicago. Now here's the value, value of a Rory Sparrow, that veteran who knows where, how to get the ball to Jordan. Jordan loses it going in, but it's last touched by Nance. I can't remember Michael Jordan losing the ball or making as many bad passes in a ball game as he has today. He may say when it's over, win or lose, that it's one of the toughest games he's had to play. seconds to get the shot off Jordan Nance the rebound Williams goes in and cuts the lead to two with five minutes to go double figures for Williams Cavaliers have five men in doubles today Chicago though has the rebounding edge keep in mind that has been the tail of the tape in the first four games whoever's gotten the rebounding edge is one Nine on the clock. Pippen. Turn around over Nance. Tough shot over Larry Nance. Well, Scotty Pippen is really stepping forward, and, and you see why he was the number one pick for the Chicago Bulls this year. 22 points for Pippen. His season's high is 24. He's come on big as a rookie starting this crucial game. Eight on the shot clock. Harper with a runner off the glass. Rebound by Nance. Out of bounds, Chicago's ball. But the Bulls are playing very tough defensively. They're all over Cavalier shooters. And both teams, have their big people are going to the offense and defensive boards. Michael Jordan hit only two of his first six from the field midway through the second period. Since then, 9 of 12 and 33 points. But Scottie Pippen has been the other man for the Bulls this afternoon. Well, right now, he is the man, the way he's performed in this second half for the Chicago team. 96-92 Chicago, under four minutes. Price defending against Sparrow, and Corzine hits one. Corzine had been in a shooting slump, came into this game, shooting only 29% against the Cavaliers. He is five for five in the second half. Price. And Oakley, the rebound. Bulls by six. What we're seeing right now is more patience at the offensive end of the court. In the set offense by the Bulls, we're seeing the, Bull, the, the Cavs just taking that quick shot. Nearly a steal by Price. He almost picked a Jordan pass off. And the 24-second clock expired. It did, and the, the, the noise is so loud, the officials couldn't hear it. The 24-second clock had expired before the shot, and that basket should not count. The Bulls are celebrating to an eight-point lead at this point. Today's but the Bulls... Get a basket inside, nonetheless, by Scotty Pippen and lead by eight with 2.59 to go. They have scored six in a row in the last two minutes. You have to give that those two points or the assist at least to this crowd here in Chicago. Because you wouldn't have heard the horn, the buzzer. Williams looking inside. Now, great drive inside and draws the foul. That is the fourth team foul on the Cavaliers. He'll shoot anyway. And John Williams, who is a 56% free throw shooter, 
Scotty Pippen picks up his fifth personal foul. One more and Pippen is gone. Now the frustrating thing for Doug Collins sitting on the bench watching John Williams that last time take it to the basket strong and pick up the foul is that he goes right every time he touches the basketball. So he wanted his players to force him left. And you sit there as a coach and you say, my goodness, this is the fifth game and we've seen the same thing. One out of two for Williams. Everything from now on is going to be critical in this game. The loser goes home, and Michael Jordan will have the ball in his hands. He's got 33 at four after the first period. Now on this play, they'll try and keep Michael Jordan out of the middle. Didn't matter. They can't keep him out anywhere, it seems, right now. Oh, this is his time of the game. Nine-point lead, Chicago. 2.20 to go. Foul away from the ball, and they'll shoot this one. It's the 15 foul. Now what happens? It's a foul on Scotty Pippen, and that's his sixth foul. Pippen fouls out. That is the fifth foul against Chicago, and so the Cavaliers should shoot. Scotty Pippen matches his season's high of 24 points was told right before the game that he would stop, start in place of Brad Sellers and has responded dramatically here. When Doug Collins told us yesterday that he was going to wait until the game time to tell him, I was very surprised. I would think he'd want the player to prepare himself mentally for that position, but he said, no, no, not with the rookie. I know this young man too well. He'll overreact and he won't get one bit of sleep tonight. He knew what he was doing with his man. There's a timeout story. Cleveland with a trap defense of their own, trailing by seven. Again, the same thing. Jordan looking to go to the weak side. He's going to try and power the ball to the middle. And stolen by Harper with two minutes to go. Price. And Sparrow takes him down. A lot of people may think that's a severe foul, but that's what you want to do. You don't want Price to get the shot off. When you're in the playoffs, you want to foul him. Make sure there's no chance of a shot. One of two choices. You let him go in for the layup, or you make sure there's no chance for a three-point play. Put a little pressure on Mark Price. Sparrow made the right move. Yes, he did. But Price is one of the best free-throw shooters. Five for five in this game, and... 23 out of 24 in the series. One of the best free throw shooters in the league, Mark Price. And we'll see Cleveland come right back with the full court pressure, looking to trap, try to create a turnover. Five point lead, 102 97. Oakley and Sparrow in the backcourt. 12 on the shot clock. Plenty of time to go. Knocked away by Harper out of bounds. Six for seconds, and they'll have five to try a shot. Now, right now, Cleveland should, Ron Harper should deny the basketball to Michael Jordan, force someone else to make that play. Corzine to Jordan. Blocked by Nance, and they call the foul on Nance. And the Cavaliers are up in arms. Now, Larry Nance was very upset with this call, and I... From our angle, it was tough to tell if he did get the ball or there was a foul with the body. It is his fifth personal foul. Five on Nance. Now, Dave Corzine makes a great pass. Harper does deny the basketball. There he goes to the basket. Little contact before he gets to that point, and then the block. Jordan, 11 of 14 from the line. Six-point lead with 135 to go. If you're looking ahead, the Cavaliers have the only three-point baskets in this series, and all of them by Mark Price. He has four. Seven-point bulge. And Rory Sparrow will just face guard Mark Price all over the court, trying not to allow him to get that three-point shot, and they'll look for someone else to look for it. Jordan has 37. And they call the foul. Jordan is upset. It's a shooting situation. Jordan's fourth foul, but Cleveland will shoot a pair. Now here's the ball inside to Brad Doherty. Looks like he steals it. Is that a makeup call? <laughs> I wonder. 
Something to consider, Bill. Oh. <laughs> and I'm sure both coaches are definitely considering it. Doherty is five for eight from the free throw line. John Paxson has come in. And Jordan getting a breather. Check that. He's there. It's Paxson and Sparrow with Jordan, Corzine, and Oakley. Reason for this is Doug Collins wants ball handlers in the ball game. So now basically he has three guards in there offensively. One out of two for Darty. 104-98. There's enough timeouts to this point for the Cavaliers. Price all over Sparrow. Seven on the shot clock. Sparrow way off the mark with a jumper, but Oakley gets the rebound, and Jordan. Doherty clears outlets to Harper and throws it away. Ron Harper should have caught that ball, and he knows it. Big break. Big turnover. Twelve on the shot clock. Jordan is it knocked away by Harper. Watch him pull up for the three. Price with Paxson in his face. Hits the three-point three shot. And it's 104-101. 33 seconds to go. Price hit it with Paxson in his face. 104-101 Chicago with 33 seconds remaining and the question is will this errant play where Harper did not reach for it ultimately do in the Cleveland Cavaliers miracle try it's been seven years since they've advanced past the first round three-point lead Chicago 33 seconds to go Plenty of time for Cleveland. They don't want to pick up a silly foul, and the best thing is to keep the ball out of Jordan's hands. And if there's a foul, it'll be a shooting foul, wherever it is. Sparrow from the corner. Jordan tips it no good. Oakley battles. They got a foul. Charles Oakley got the big rebound for Chicago, and Jordan is fouled by Price. It was Charles Oakley who did the dirty work inside and got the big rebound to keep it alive for Chicago to just about end the hopes of the Cleveland Cavaliers. But the free throws are critical here for Michael Jordan. He's 13 of 16 from the line and 37 points in the game. That'll be the biggest rebound of Charles Oakley's career. If he makes it, the Cavaliers will need two three-point baskets in seven seconds to tie. Timeout. But the Bulls can start to celebrate. And the Cavaliers, to borrow a phrase, have nothing, simply nothing to be ashamed of. has responded with 24 points and great all-round hustle seven seconds to go no doubt here they got to go for the three turn it over and Doug Collins wants a timeout Chicago calls time they've got this game in their back pocket someone besides Michael Jordan to come through today and they found him our Miller Lite player of the game is Scotty Pippen that's what he did today and Miller is proud to present a check for a thousand dollars to the multiple sclerosis society on behalf of the rookie from central Arkansas Scotty Pippen Horace Grant will inbound with seven seconds to go If someone came up to me and said at this point, which team would you like to coach? Which, God forbid I ever did that again. But which team would I like to coach next year? I think it's Cleveland. To see how this team has played with four key players never getting into the playoffs. 
before this year and see how they perform being down 2-0 coming back winning the next two games coming into this building the way they perform you just have to tip your hat to the players as well as coach Lenny will not shown any sense of panic or rush things I know they made a key turnover at the end of the game but this is a team that seems together Lenny Wilkins told us yesterday that other than coaching the world championship in 1979 this year has been the most fun for him seeing these kids and how they support each other they went through a stretch after the trade where they lost 13 out of 16 ball games and he said the players were concerned with him that he wasn't getting down I mean it's just so much fun for him to this run and got this lead with with uh, Michael Jordan sitting on the bench that was the key point of the game Harper Rebound Oakley. And that'll do it. The Bulls advance. They'll play the winner of the Detroit Washington game. And Michael Jordan with 39 points. The Bulls advance for the first time in seven years. For Billy Cunningham, I'm Dick Stockton saying so long from Chicago.